The Punic Wars. Imagine you are a soldier in the Roman army. Your army is called the Roman Legion, and you are a legionary. You are wearing heavy, thick armor and a helmet with flaps to protect your head and face during fights. If you are one of Rome's finest soldiers, you are wearing a helmet with a furry strip on top. Besides your armor, you have a shield, a spear, and a short sword. You have learned to march in perfect step with hundreds of other legionaries. You have faced many enemies in battle, and you are prepared to fight for Rome. Since the founding of the Roman Republic, you and other legionaries have proudly fought to expand Rome's power. And influence. Legionary. Roman territory and Carthaginian territory. Rome is no longer just a city. Through the years, it has expanded to include the majority of the area known as present-day Italy. Dozens of kingdoms and other areas have been absorbed by the Roman Republic. Some have resisted and fought Rome's growing power, only to fall before the mighty Roman legions. Other kings have accepted Roman rule and have become wealthy patrician citizens. Now you are preparing to fight a new enemy. This enemy is not an old king desperately clinging to an old way of life. This enemy comes from across the Mediterranean. They are called the Carthaginians, and their goal is to destroy Rome itself. The Carthaginians, or the people of Carthage, are from North Africa. There, they have built a vast civilization, even larger and richer than the Roman Republic. City of Carthage. Carthage is the trading center of the known world. By land and by sea, most traded goods from the exotic or unfamiliar lands to the east, Mesopotamia, Persia, India, pass through Carthaginian territory on their way to Rome or wherever else they may be headed. Perhaps a conflict between the powers of Rome and Carthage is unavoidable. Two growing civilizations may only share the same sea and land for so long. As Rome has expanded through Italy, Carthage has expanded throughout North Africa and across the sea to present-day Spain. This rivalry between these two expanding civilizations. Has led to several battles, which have become known as the Punic Wars. Imagine you and your legion are preparing for a battle with the Carthaginians. You are practicing a formation called the testudo or turtle. You and your fellow legionaries gather closely and lock your shields together. Hopefully, this will give you some protection. From the hundreds of Carthaginian arrows that are sure to come your way in battle, you have not had much time to prepare. Two days ago, you and your legion were preparing to be shipped off to fight on the island of Sicily, just off the shores of Italy, which the Carthaginians are trying to claim as their own. Then, out of nowhere, your general announced. That a mighty army was invading Rome from the north, something you and your fellow soldiers believed to be impossible. Roman soldiers training in fighting formation, testudo. This mighty invading army of soldiers from Carthage is led by a general named Hannibal. Hannibal and his troops are coming from Spain. In order to invade Italy from the north, Hannibal and his army would need to cross the Alps. These mountains stretch throughout northern Italy, and you and the other Romans 
have always felt safe believing that no invading army could possibly cross these peaks. You and your fellow soldiers were wrong, and now you and the Roman legion must prepare to defend your homeland. It is not going to be easy. You believe you are a better soldier than any Carthaginian, but you don't really know because you have never faced one in battle. You have no idea what this army from Carthage will look like, but you know they must be strong if they were able to climb those mountains. You heard rumors that aside from many thousands of soldiers, the Carthaginians are bringing some kind of terrible monsters to the fight. Okay, let's take a break now from pretending to be a Roman legionary. It is actually a bit frightening to imagine what happened in battle. Hannibal, the Carthaginian general, really did cross the frozen Italian Alps with a huge army. And he really did bring monsters. Well, the Romans thought they were monsters, but do you see what they actually were? Elephants! The Romans had never seen elephants before. Elephants are not only very big and very strong, they are also very smart. The Carthaginians used that size, strength, and intelligence to their advantage in war. Italian Alps Hannibal with Elephants One of the reasons the Romans had been able to expand so quickly through Italy and beyond was because they were excellent fighters. Roman soldiers were highly disciplined, meaning that they obeyed orders and were more determined to win for Rome than to survive. The main part of the Roman army consisted of heavily armored soldiers. They were the foot soldiers or infantry. The infantry was supported by cavalry, soldiers on horseback, like the ones in this image. They marched shoulder to shoulder toward the enemy and won because they stayed together instead of panicking and running away. Roman Army Units Infantry Supported by Cavalry Bracing for Attack At least they didn't usually run away scared, but that's exactly what they did the first time they encountered Hannibal and his war elephants. The Roman legions were terrified by the elephants, in addition to the thousands of soldiers Hannibal had marched through the mountains. The Roman cavalry was no match for Hannibal's elephants, which stomped and trampled everything in sight. In fact, the horses were too smart to even try to attack the elephants, no matter what the soldiers did. Romans losing to elephants. Hannibal frustrated with failed attacks, hearing news that some Romans are going to Carthage. At first, it seemed as though Hannibal would have no problem marching his army and elephants all the way to Rome. Unfortunately for Hannibal, the Romans were clever. Instead of trying to defeat Hannibal's army in an open battle all at once, the Romans harassed or repeatedly attacked them in small groups, escaping before the rest of the Carthaginians knew what was happening. Hannibal had hoped to crush the Roman army in an attack on northern Rome in one easy battle, but instead he found himself roaming around the Italian countryside trying to find enough food to feed thousands of hungry soldiers and a couple dozen elephants. Believe it or not, this went on for nearly 16 years. Toward the end of this war, the Romans put together another army and set sail for Carthage to fight the Third Punic War. When Hannibal heard the news that some of the Romans were headed to Carthage, he was forced to hurry home. Instead of destroying Rome, 
he ended up racing home to try to defend Carthage from the Romans. During these three Punic Wars, which lasted more than 100 years, Rome and Carthage fought for ultimate control of the Mediterranean Sea and all the land surrounding it. The Punic Wars did not turn out well for the Carthaginians. Eventually, the Romans sacked Carthage, meaning they took everything of value and destroyed the rest. They also took many Carthaginians as slaves. As a result of winning the Punic Wars, Rome gained control of nearly every bit of land around the Mediterranean. This was the beginning of one of the most powerful empires in all of history. Romans defeating Carthaginians at Carthage.